We have some very, very, very good news to start the year. This is an article from The Drive. Volkswagen is putting buttons back into their cars because people complained enough. So this is a huge win for people like myself who want to go back to not having everything be pixelated as we've talked about so many times here on the channel because it simply doesn't make sense and it's also a bit unsafe. So I'm really happy to see this and I'm really, I really hope that this will spill over to other many factors as well with Volkswagen taking the first step of bringing back actual buttons. So let's have a look at this article from uh, The Drive. I'm gonna link this down in the description, go through this and then I'm gonna show you Vo uh, Volkswagen sort of design evolution from the early 2000s, mid 2000s up until today and how we reach this peak that you see right here for the, I believe this is the ID4 interior where pretty much everything is pixelated and not user friendly at all. So whether you've driven a new Volkswagen or not, there's a good chance you've heard about its interiors. People who care about the German Everyman brand have been extremely opinionated about the car's lack of physical buttons, me included. So Volkswagen CEO, even he says, it's been extremely frustrating. Touchscreen controls definitely did a lot of damage which is great. So Volkswagen here, what I like about this is that Volkswagen took this information, the feedback from the customers and their own experience with their own vehicles and actually made some changes about it to improve it. And Volkswagen's interior designer here says, going back to buttons on all new vehicles. Fantastic news. So there are still touch screens, obviously. You still have a big screen in the middle. This is a new ID2 All, which has a little bit of a different layout. The infotainment display is large and is in charge still. And there is also a digital gauge cluster, which is totally fine for me. I do wish, however, as you know, in this case, the ID2 All, uh, does just have a small screen like we have here in the ID4 as well. I want to have it be way better implemented. A bit more passion behind this design and integration of this gauge cluster. But if it's digital or not, it, it, it really doesn't matter to me. I would prefer to have two gauges, the tachometer uh, and speedometer, being analog with the screen in the middle. That is my personal preference. I'm going to show you exactly what type of year era was my peak Volkswagen interiors when we jump into Photoshop in a minute. But instead of all the controls being hidden behind menus and these displays, they're toggle switches on the center stack. So if you zoom in here on this photo of the new ID2 All, which by the way is a fantastic design exterior overall, you can see that you, it looks like you still have the climate control settings here implemented in the lower section. But now at least they added these toggles at the bottom so you can quickly adjust the temperature, which is something that you do several times normally when you're out driving. So this is reassuring for the simple fact that actual buttons just work. And sometimes I think we don't need to keep always innovating and creating new things when we have stuff that works perfectly fine. It's not necessary to turn everything into this simulated. It feels like we're going into a world where everything needs to be simulated in some way. It can't just stay in its natural form. And one person said the ID Force tech ruined what was an otherwise practical and livable EV. It's awful, likely the worst I've ever come across. There is a climate system on off icon on the screen that you must click to turn the AC on or the or heater on. You can't just push the fan speed icon and exp expect it to turn on. No, you must tap the on button first and then adjust the temperature or speed separately. This extra step makes absolutely zero sense and to me as well. I never understood why we went into this direction in the first place. As you can tell based on the, that blurb, actual buttons will be welcomed back with open arms. Let's have a look at some of these uh, comments here. There's one specific comment that I saw uh, that made a lot of sense down here. And it is this one from Mike. Seeing a customer one time unload a vehicle strictly off the a unload, I think mean crash a vehicle uh, strictly uh, off the AC controls being in the screen. She almost hit someone after the temp outside dropped and the windshield fogged up immediately. She wasn't able to just physically hit a deep frost button and turn a, a dial up to high within seconds to avoid the situation. I mean, in reality, it can happen. It wasn't far fetched and it seems like it did happen in this case. And I could understand her frustration. Obviously, some people are more adept to the technology and can navigate it even in fast situation. But for her, uh, no go. Of course, we can adapt to it. But why would it be necessary to adapt to something that doesn't work as well as it did before? So let's jump into Photoshop here. And I want to show you the evolution of Volkswagen designs, interior designs, and which one of these is my favorite solution for 
uh, interior styling and functionality, usability, ergonomics, and so on. So starting with the top uh, up top here, we do have the 2001 Polo. And I used to be a huge fan of these interiors from Volkswagen. I don't mind that it, it feels a little cheap, uh, you know, by, by today's standards, but I still think it has this beautiful, nice, cozy analog feel where you still had the connection to the car and the mechanical pieces of the car that is com almost completely lacking today, which by this article, I hope we're going back to a little bit when it comes to the interior. But you can see we have the same color all over here, and this is definitely the wrong brush. Let's use this instead. This is a 2001 Polo. I used to be a massive fan of how this was integrated. I still am today, even the materials and the colors it looks a little bit boring maybe, but it worked so nicely. And as I said, having analog clusters like this with a nice housing for it, this is exactly what I wanna see. You do have this small little uh, pixelated display. Probably these pixels, some here, would uh, fail after a while. It was pretty common with German cars of the early 2000s. BMW had the same issue as well. And look down here, we do have the manual transmission. This looks to be a five speed for this Polo. Very fun car to drive. I drove a lot of these in, in Sweden when I, when I grew up. And I still think that the, the early Polos had one of the best looking hatchback designs. You just need a couple of wheels on it. And it was a fantastic looking uh, design when it comes to the proportions. Now moving down to 2010 Beetle, as you can see here, comparing these two uh, designs, it still has the same feeling when it comes to analog versus uh, digital stuff, but they started to add a little bit more high quality material. For example, you can see the steering wheel, got a lot more styling to it and different materials, leather wrapped. We have some curvatures here, very typical or, or radiuses in this area, very typical for this uh, 2010 era. And now we also have a nice screen, perfectly sized. It looks to be maybe six or seven inches screen, which is completely fine for me. I don't need a bigger screen than this. This is all I want in an in, in car interior. I don't want a 17 inch TV on the dash. A lot of physical buttons around this. The volume control, the tuning, and this complete section down here, completely 100% dedicated to the climate controls. And it will be so easy to just drive along and feel your way what it is you're adjusting instead of having to stop at the side of the road, figure out the new interface for the new car that you bought, and learn a new way of doing this simple task. I really like this generation of the of uh, Volkswagen is because we still have nice deep sitting uh, analog clusters and we do have the, the small little display here in the middle and a nice round housing for it in very typical uh, Volkswagen fashion for this era. Still has a manual and then it jumped it up from the Polo. Now we do have a six speed manual right here. I uh, hope they come back with a few more manuals for their smaller size cars, but they seems to be very, Volkswagen is one of these brands that seems to be very, very focused on EVs. Not sure how that is going to go because EVs are simply not selling in the uh, volumes that uh, pretty much every single manufacturer were hoping for them to sell. Now going into 2019, the Arteon or Arteon, I'm not sure how to pronounce that really, but here we have a very clean interior as well. Look at the styling here. The interior designers got a lot more freedom to create something unique here and create more of a brand identity for the interior designs of these cars as well. The, the first 2001, the early 2000, mid 2000s, it looked pretty much like a lot of other cars. It was only pretty Pretty recently where car manufacturers started to think about how can we turn the you know the, the way that the exterior design expresses our brand identity how can we transform that to the interior as well and I do think that this looks absolutely great because we do have still not a too big of a screen it's nicely integrated it has some styling framing around it we have a nice analog clock up here these vents that go across the entire interior create some nice width to it and we have a fully digital uh, gauge cluster in the middle looking totally fine because we do have a clear housing for it, it means we, we're not going to have any glare, glare and the screen still sits deep within the interior dash which i love we also have a clean looking steering wheel with some new design features here. Instead of having just to be around in the middle, we have some styling for the internal pieces of the steering wheel. And we also have some buttons on the sides here as well on the spokes, which is pretty common today. But the key reason I like this design, I, I think it sits between 2010 or 2009, 20, something like that when it comes to the interior, because we still had the physical buttons intact down here. We still have this little control panel that we have in 2019 and that we also had right here in early 2000s. That control panel is still sacred. We don't touch that because it's such a, a common 
control to adjust all the time and we don't want to mess that up until we come into 2023 and the ID4. And here you can see that everything is, if you just zoom out here and have a look at what's going on, what is the trend moving forward? It looks like everything is becoming a lot more stripped down, a lot more minimalistic, a lot less expressions in the interior designs. I honestly think that the 2010 is probably my favorite here over the 2019 interior because this just feels more homey and it, it, the vibe overall just relate or, or speaks to me more than the 2019, which I think looks more like an, like, a, like a house interior or something like that, or architectural in its approach. And then we come in here where everything is digitalized, pixelated, and you don't even have a housing anymore for the gauge cluster. It's not, I'm not sure if you can even recall this a gauge cluster anymore. It's just a tiny little screen up here. Big screen where everything is integrated in the uh, software. We don't have anything down here. You can see that this, by the way, for an EV of today, I think this is one of the more stylistic interior. Let me compare this to a Tesla Model 3, for example, uh, which is completely lacking of any sort of uh, passion from the interior. It must have been the most boring interior to design as an interior designer with the Tesla Model 3. At least they have some curvatures and some radiuses and different styling features in the ID4, which I appreciate. But still, again, all of this, we don't have this sacred panel for the climate control down here anymore because everything has been integrated in the software which I do guess they save a little bit of money on because you don't need as many uh, physical parts manufactured to create the, the, the dials and the buttons and everything like that but it still loses a lot when it comes to the overall experience of driving this car so I'm really happy to see the Volkswagen is going back to Probably something in this um, fashion that we have in 2019 uh, and, and this sort of styling because they've heard enough from the customers and I do think that a lot of other manufacturers, I, at least I hope so, will follow suit and do the same thing with their interiors, bring back some more of this classy interiors that we're used to seeing and that does have at least physical buttons for the most important settings that we use every day in our cars.